دكتور عبد الكريم أبو خضير. So is the first presenter here, Dr. Abdullah? Yeah, yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, Maria Samir. Yeah. So we will start at one o five. You can, if you are ready, you can just upload your presentation. Sure. Thank you. السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام مرحبا معكم دكتورة مريم الأمير just uh, you want to um, I just have a few comments on the uh, organization of the lectures uh, as I noticed like you guys discussing more uh, multiple valve disease um, just my comment is regarding to the trials that you guys are discussing I think Last week, you discussed ARTA trials, and this week, uh, you're planning to discuss coronary trial. I think you guys have discussed this before. It would have been more beneficial if you involve uh, newer trials, like you guys have never discussed it before, uh, especially uh, valve-related trials. Uh, for new recent um, uh, multiple valve disease trials, uh, concomitant tricuspid valve repair with, uh, mitral, with the degenerative mitral valve disease, this was published just last year, 2022. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this trial, just randomized controlled trials, and it was published in a New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, so just to talk about uh, the, uh, the implication and when to operate um, on the tricuspid valve, if it's mild to moderate, as a concomitant with a severe degenerative mitral valve disease. So this is very important trials if you guys want to discuss it in the upcoming sessions. Um, also, the CTSNET trials uh, about uh, uh, the mitral valve disease as a concomitant with, as ischemic mitral valve disease concomitant with coronary artery disease. There is a moderate ischemic MR and the severe ischemic MR trials at all CTSNET trials. I think it's very important uh, to discuss them. I will send in the group uh, the trials, and uh, I'm not sure who's organizing the trial, but if you want to discuss it, uh, feel free. I'll try to join as much as possible. Uh, the problem that I have a few session, teaching sessions on Thursdays, so I will miss some of them. Yes, uh, Dr. Mariam, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum uh, Yeah, if you can send it, please, Dr. Mariam, and we can arrange, inshallah, to put it in the schedule, inshallah. Inshallah. And just yani, my, my observation, you guys are repeating the same trials, coronary art. So it would be yeah. more beneficial if you discuss new things. Uh, okay, just sure. the last things before uh, we start, I just want to emphasize on the uh, Dr. Luay Arcelocom um, survey about uh, your satisfaction in the residency program. Uh, so if, uh, there is only 22 uh, response. So if you can, whoever didn't fill it up, please fill. It's only take like five to 10 minutes for your time. It's very important. It's for your benefit to try to improve the residency program. Try to be honest and answering is it is autonomous. So nobody would know uh, who's filling the, the survey. I will resend it again. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Maryam. Uh, inshallah, we will uh, fill, fill up the survey, inshallah. Um, Dr. Abdullah, you are ready? I cannot hear you very well. Okay, sure, yes, I can start. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, um, I'll be talking about talking about multiple valve disease topic uh, as a um, uh, more and more against overseeing more of those uh, patients uh, as uh, patients are being diagnosed uh, late, and um, 
getting more and more complicated. So just an introduction, uh, pathologic, uh, so multiple paths is the pathologic changes in the heart valves requiring surgical correction uh, of more than uh, one valve and causes um, can be different. Uh, rheumatic uh, heart disease, what we see here in our population, rheumatic heart disease um, have a big portion of that, uh, of that population. Degenerative valve disease, infective endocarditis, especially in patients who had previous valves uh, surgeries, uh, they tend to present with infective endocarditis, uh, especially with patients with poor dental hygiene, and then you end up with uh, endocarditis of more, of more than one valve requiring more complex procedures uh, such as commando and et cetera. Just an overview of the anatomy and the importance uh, that aspect when you look at the, um, uh, from a surgical point of view, how those uh, four valves are related and uh, anatomically uh, and how close they are and, uh, and, uh, and the vital uh, structures. Here a short, uh, um, a short uh, view of the base of the heart. You can see the four valves left valve and how uh, they are uh, interrelated. Um, this is uh, just uh, showing the orthomitral curtain, where you can see the mitral uh, valve here and how it's related to the aortic valve, left chronic cusp and non-chronic cusp. This is again from the four, uh, same view, showing the uh, four different valves along with the uh, coronaries uh, around the valves and uh, how complex it can get when replacing more than one valves and in extreme cases replacing the four valves. So uh, valve dysfunction in general can be primary or secondary. Primary is part of the disease process affecting the valve itself, secondary due to cardiac enlargement uh, and or pulmonary hypertension. So a bit of history, the first triple valve replacement during single operation was reported in 1960. The replacement of all uh, four, uh, four valves was reported in 90, uh, first report in 1992. Uh, initially in 1952 in Philadelphia, uh, been reported the staged mitral then tricuspid uh, commissurotomy. Uh, and then uh, following that in 1953, simultaneous mitral uh, tricuspid commercial otomy. And then in 56, uh, my, uh, uh, mitral commercial otomy and aortic fibroplasty will bypass. Uh, and then in the 1960, mitral aortic placement. And then uh, uh, we, um, uh, you can see that it's not very long time ago uh, the uh, the multiple valves have been uh, quadruple valves have been done in 1992 actually in around 30 years. So uh, epidemiology uh, um, multiple valve operations is 15% of all operation of, on cardiac valves involving two valves or more. 80% of these operations involve aortic and mitral positions. 20% of operations are replacement of mitral and tricuspid valves with or without aortic replacement. Rarely is the combination of aortic and tricuspid disease. Um, as you can see here, percentage of uh, um, uh, all uh, valve uh, surgeries, uh, different uh, uh, centers, main centers in North America, um, showing that the, as you can see, and it makes sense, much on aortic, uh, um, uh, replacements are taking the bigger portion, and then uh, then the mitral aortic and tricuspid, and the least, of course, would be the aortic and tricuspid. Pathophysiology of multiple valve disease, so valve regurgitation, uh, primary, secondary, as you said, results from changing in ventricle, uh, secondary from primary from the primary disease, and uh, secondary uh, changing in ventricle morphology. 
Uh, usually, it's a, a sec if it's secondary, uh, it's uh, expected to improve with the repair or replacement of the primary disease valve or not if it's if it's uh, extensive or severe uh, that it needs uh, both uh, both valves will need intervention in case of primary aortic valve disease with secondary mitral regurgitation uh, isolate, isolated aortic valve lesions can cause secondary regurgitation so the disease itself whether rheumatic uh, or 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 degenerative or even uh, um, uh, long term affecting uh, infective endocarditis that affected uh, the one, any of the valves a long time ago can progress to and affect the other valve uh, secondarily. So, severe aortic valve stenosis is uh, 65% associated with mitral valve leakage. So, uh, there are two scenarios mitral valve is structurally normal, and mitral valve is structurally abnormal. Mitral when the valve, um, mitral valve is structurally uh, normal, regurgitation is expected to improve with relief of uh, the LVOT. Uh, if it's uh, mild, uh, uh, regurgitation resolve is almost uh, is almost completely uh, will resolve with the with the, uh, with the, uh, the fixation of the aortic valve. Um, because of the decrease in intra, uh, by fixing the aortic valve, you will decrease the intraventricular pressure and ventricular remodeling. In case where the mitral pathology is severe, some of the degree of persistent regurgitation is expected, so you would also uh, attempt to repair the other, uh, the secondarily affected uh, valve, and uh, just to spare the patient another visit to the operating room and a complication and a uh, morbidity from that. Uh, structurally abnormal mitral valve, uh, uh, where the, the aortic pathology is there and also the mitral valve is affected and it's structurally abnormal, it's advised that to, 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 to be repaired, uh, whether it's moderate or, 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 or uh, severe. Um, Several reports concluded that moderate amal has an adverse impact on survival in elderly patients. Investigation, as we all know, tra <clears throat> transthoracic uh, echo to define the etiology, whether it's primary or secondary, uh, and, uh, and intraoperatively uh, as a routine, and many instances uh, uh, preoperatively TE is best uh, in giving the best resolution. And the routine would be usually uh, performing, especially in those complex procedures, preoperative TEE. Uh, usually, senior echocardiologist uh, performing, and usually, uh, ma many times you would see the decision of intervention of uh, of any of the valves would be would be changed. However, uh, intraoperatively, as we know, anesthesia can affect the uh, the the. Uh, uh, findings of that, and that, that should be taken into consideration. Um, uh, and the other methods of assessing uh, the, the uh, valves, which is not, I've never seen not routinely used ventriculography, quantify left atrioventricular valve leakage, probably just a pediatric population, right ventricular angiography, degree of tricuspid valve dysfunction. Uh, tricuspid valve regurgitation secondary to other valve uh, disease, commonly is associated with rheumatic mitral valve stenosis, and the exact cause is uh, unknown. Tricuspid valve uh, annual dilatation in those with severe uh, TR is asymmetric. So uh, when there is mitral stenosis causing secondary tricuspid uh, regurgitation, usually the enlargement uh, on the right ventricle is mostly in the free wall, and minimal dilatation occurs at uh, the septal leaflet. As you know, uh, septal leaflet is used to uh, uh, measure usually the, the uh, uh, intertrigonal, and that's how it's used as a reference uh, to you uh, for the sizing of the uh, valve. So we have th four scenarios. First, would have we would have the tricuspid regurg secondary to pulmonary uh, artery hypertension uh, and right ventricular dilatation. 
And the second scenario would be patients who have had uh, mitral valve uh, uh, for rheumatic MS may develop a, a, a regurgitation of their native tricuspid valve years after the initial operation, although they did not have uh, the pathology itself in the beginning. Uh, and uh, th those patients, uh, probably the underlying pathology would be having a modest uh, elevation of the uh, PA pressure and progressive immunologic process in rheuma rheumatic valve disease, which can lead to severe uh, TR. Um, it can be, can be classified se secondary MR and TR as mild, moderate, and severe. So mild TR uh, uh, does not have clinical signs and symptoms of right-sided heart failure, does not require intervention. Uh, significant regurgitation, uh, where they do, do not have symptoms or have their uh, symptoms controlled by medical treatment. Uh, usually for those patients, uh, repair uh, is, is, is uh, uh, indicated since they have significant tricuspid regurgitation and to avoid the uh, long-term uh, um, affecting the patient uh, status. Uh, usually the repair or uh, the vega uh, suture aneuroplasty or partial ring aneuroplasty. Um, and uh, it's debatable. Uh, many surgeons still use the vega and many surgeons use ring and there are conflicting reports whether the uh, on the long term the uh, Redilatation of the annulus with the, the vega compared to the ring, and theoretically, uh, there are reports that would ring uh, uh, less uh, regurgitation in the long term. Severe uh, secondary uh, TR and clinical evidence of right side heart failure, uh, so concomitant con ring aneuplasty or replacement. Uh, third scenario, scenario would be degree uh, the the uh, degree of pulmonary hypertension may influence surgical management uh, of tr secondary tricuspid valve regurgitation. So after mitral valve surgery without operation on uh, tricuspid valve, so in case of severe pulmonary hypertension or moderate pulmonary hypertension, uh, in case patients who have severe pulmonary hypertension, uh, um, after uh, mitral valve surgery. Uh, the uh, regression of uh, TR is expected. However, only 28% will have complete uh, resolution of uh, TR. And uh, in moderate pulmonary hypertension, worsening of right ventricular heart failure may uh, will continue to have uh, TR. Uh, the difficulty with the management of uh, secondary TR include uh, heterogeneity in the both patient disease substrate and surgical procedure. So rheumatic MR, the incidence of late severe TR is 68%, up to 30 years following MVR, and ischemic MR, secondary TR is 74%, uh, three years following repair of ischemic uh, MR. Uh, in case of mitral valve prolapse, uh, moderate or less functional TR does not uh, progress following repair of uh, leaflet uh, prolapse as aggressively, and mitral valve surgery before development of left atrial dilatation or pulmonary hypertension. So in that case, indication for concomitant tricuspid valve repair would be moderately uh, severe or severe uh, TR, right-sided heart failure symptoms with moderate or severe TR, moderate TR with one of the followings, or the primary TR, structure abnormalities, dilated right atrium and uh, right ventricle, uh, severe pulmonary hypertension or atrial fibrillation. The choice of the valve uh, for placement, uh, just uh, a point here on uh, tricuspid uh, replacement. Um, I'm sure uh, it's always a difficult uh, decision uh, about the intervention of the, of the tricuspid valve. And in many instances, the especially in redo surgeries, uh, in multiple valve surgeries in the past and multiple uh, cardiac surgeries, how the, and the RV would be affected. Patients would come with uh, poor RV and uh, sometimes uh, it's difficult to make the decision, uh, even with experienced uh, uh, cardiologists and uh, surgeons, it's very difficult decision whether to go for that valve or not and to attempt um, 
the uh, repair uh, versus replacement. And, uh, and in many uh, times the, uh, the annulus is extremely dilated, the, that the uh, repair is not really gonna, uh, gonna work. And you're gonna end with replacement with a poor RV, and then you're gonna have problem with RV impairment, and uh, it can lead in, in in often to losing the patients because that RV, that poor RV, is is was using this uh, tricuspid uh, uh, regurg as a, a vent mechanism. Uh, and by having a competent uh, tricuspid uh, valve, uh, that will make the right ventricle suffer. Um, especially in, in, in those uh, cases with multiple valves, I believe, other than uh, purely solely uh, tricuspid valve pathology, uh, it's a, a difficult decision. And uh, of course, a multidisciplinary team approach or hard team approach is advised. Uh, as to not to face the consequences of uh, mortality and morbidity. Uh, choosing the valve uh, type, uh, valve is uh, mechanical. Uh, so uh, multiple valve placement to the, left uh, to the left side, chosen from the same class. So studies shows no reduction in the risk of thromboembolism, valve-related morbidity or late death in respect to tissue valve and more hemodynamic advantages in comparison to mechanical, uh, especially in, in atrioventricular valves. Uh, lower reoperation rate is reported patient with two mechanical uh, valves on the, on the left side. Um, however, that's it's debatable. Now the, the trend is, uh, is, is uh, cl clinically what we, see, what we are seeing that more towards the uh, tissue valve uh, and um, that, are, that is uh, for many reasons, especially that currently tissue valves have a good uh, long-term uh, 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 lifetime. And also with the uh, interventional, uh, interventional options, uh, uh, catheter-based interventions, uh, other than uh, redo surgeries. However, that is uh, still uh, debatable. Um, uh, mechanical valves, on the other hand, have better effective orifice uh, areas in general uh, compared to the to the uh, uh, tissue valves. For tricuspid valve replacement, use of bioprocedures have advantages to minimize the risk of uh, valve thromboses. Uh, I've never seen in the past um, is any 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 surgeon putting any uh, mechanical valve on the right side, and it's very thrombogenic, and uh, currently it should not be done. Uh, it's nearly always uh, a tissue valve on the tricuspid uh, side to avoid thrombosis. Uh, <clears throat> Can I surgical... stop you for a minute? Yes. One of the article that I've sent is randomized control tires to compare between mechanicals, exactly the same as you were mentioned about the debate whether mechanical or bioprosthetic valve in the left side valve disease uh, is optimal. So they uh, randomize different patient age groups, less than 50, 50 to 70, over 70, uh, mechanical versus bioprosthetic for both aortic and mitral valve. And uh, the result is very surprising. Um, it is a little bit um, different from uh, the general guidelines. Our general guidelines, they just um, uh, simplify it into a, more than 55 and less than 55. But in this randomized control trials, we'll see there's a difference between the aortic and the mitral valve disease with regard to the uh, uh, piprosthetic choice. Uh, it's very important trials that you guys have to read it. Thank you, Dr. Mariam. Um... Uh, I believe I came across this uh, study, but uh, I forgot to include it. I think, yes, uh, we should uh, discuss it here. It's very important. Um, uh, and uh, when you mentioned it in the, in the, in the, uh, the beginning, uh, uh, even for the tricuspid valve, uh, I think it's, uh, we should discuss it. Uh, surgical methods. Um, you, you have two, uh, aortic... Uh, and mitral valve replacement, aortic valve replacement, and mitral valve repair, mitral valve replacement, tricuspid valve replacement or repair. And for scenario would be tricuspid valve replacement, point valve replacement, of course, denied heart disease, and triple valve replacement. Uh, 
So for aortic and mitral <clears throat> cannulation, um, we've seen two scenarios of uh, cannulation usually. Aortic, uh, aortic cannulation would be the usual, uh, keep it as high as, uh, as possible, uh, just to keep it away from the, uh, the usual, nothing, nothing special. But for the uh, uh, venous cannulation, uh, the uh, double stage uh, uh, cannula uh, or the uh, bicaval cannulation, uh, different uh, depends on the approach for the mitral valve uh, and uh, different preferences for different surgeons. Um, and the cardioplegia depends on the heart size, aortic valve competency, whether you have a competent valve or incompetent uh, valve. If the aortic valve is competent, that's good. If aortic valve is regurgitant, what's mostly uh, been done in past instances is giving cardioplegia until the uh, heart is uh, resting, then opening the aorta and giving direct, direct uh, osseal uh, cardioplegia, just to make sure uh, that the, it's in the right place. Uh, other surgeons would do, would give an, an, an instances of aortic uh, regurgitation, um, aortic cardioplegia, and pressure on the LBOT. And you and can actually accurately do that by looking at their echo at the same time uh, at the cardioplegia is started. Uh, just ask the anesthesia to look at the LVOT and uh, switch on the Doppler. And you can see that uh, you are competently closing the LVOT so that with pressure with your finger or with a, with a, with a, a 4x4 uh, on the, uh, so that all the cardioplegia is going to the coronaries. Um, uh, this is a nice diagram showing uh, the, uh, the double valve replacement. So aortic, so aortic incision uh, after the plegia, aortic incision, left atrial uh, incision, and, uh, and interatrial groove, and then uh, and, uh, so of course aortic incision, aortic exposure. You look at the aortic valve, you expose it, uh, and then you look at the uh, mitral. Uh, uh, valve, uh, you can excise the uh, aortic valve and then go to the mitral valve uh, in case uh, then you excise it and then you put your switch and replacing the mitral valve first and then uh, going for the uh, aortic uh, valve. Oh, sorry, I'm back. Angela, do you know why we do this um, in that order? Or any problem? Um, uh, just to avoid the manipulation of the, uh, 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 to avoid the AV disruption. Uh, yeah, we do the mitral valve first, and then we do the aortic valve because you don't want to lift the heart after you put the, to avoid AV disruption. But why do you have to excise aortic valve leaflet, leave it, go to the mitral valve, do the repair or the replacement for the mitral valve, and then you come back to the aortic. So why the come and, you know, the back and forth between the two valves? Um, um, not sure, but uh, probably to avoid uh, taking sutures there in the leaflet. And the aortic leaflet, probably, or uh, for better sizing, of your, or you want to check if there is uh, calcification. I'm not sure, honestly. Okay. So for sizing, we know mm -hmm. that, yeah, if anyone has answer, please go ahead. I don't know whether it's associated with the assessment of the aortic mitral, mitral curtain. So you have bitter exposure from there. So you see bitter uh, anatomy. Somehow, uh, close enough. So first of all, with regards to the sizing, you know, if you're doing aortic and mitral valve replacement, you never oversize a mitral valve. Because the more, because, you know, mitral valve, you can put up to 29, right? So it's very big annulus. But you don't want to oversize a mitral valve if you have, if you'd have to do a aortic valve replacement. Because the larger prosthesis you're going to put in the mitral, it will take some of the aortic valve. 
Okay, so if you put 29 in the mitral, I'm sure you will not be able to put uh, larger than 21 in the aortic valve, if not 19. So this is one of the things that you want to avoid, that in terms of uh, sizing. Now, why we do go back and forth, it's um, um, Ayat is yani, closing up her answer. So um, you because if you put the mitral, let's say that you open the aortic valve, you, you inspect it, but you left it. You went to the mitral valve, you did your mitral valve replacement, and then you came back to excise your aortic valve leaflet. One of the danger that you may cut one of the sutures of the mitral valve. Okay, as you know, it's very close. The aortic and mitral are very close. So once you, when you're doing, for example, the deprivement of the calcium, especially for aortic stenosis, or you're cutting the leaflet, there is risk that you're cutting um, uh, one of the suture of the mitral valve, then you would have to do it again. So it's safer to debride and uh, remove all the leaflet of the aortic valve. You can't put the aortic valve first because otherwise you will not be able to see the mitral valve. So it's easier to go do mitral. And then after you finish the mitral, you come back and you do the aortic valve once. Uh, now it's easier to expose, and there is low risk of cutting the mitral valve suture. So it's two reason. Is it clear? Clear, clear, very clear. Thank you, Dr. Amari. Um, um, uh, another uh, approach for that uh, mitral and uh, tricuspid uh, 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 mitral and aortic valve would be in case of the aortomitral curtain is affected uh, while opening the aortic valve. And let's say there is absolute destruction of that uh, uh, part. A, uh, op uh, this part, this aortomitral curtain, would be also destructed along with the uh, both, uh, um, uh, probably with the other valve. Uh, so this will be removed. And usually, uh, in many instances, the the approach would be replacing the both from the uh, from the uh, aortic uh, side uh, while putting the uh, uh, while fixing the and uh, reconstructing the uh, aortomitral curtain uh, the procedure is known as command the procedure i believe we, we've discussed it before and showed um, uh, by uh, some of the colleagues in infective endocarditis is, is uh, lectures in detail so i didn't want to uh, repeat um, this is just uh, another uh, different picture showing again excising of the of the uh, leaflets and uh, and uh, sizing of the uh, uh, valves. Uh, this picture showing patch repair of cusp uh, perforation. Um, while uh, sometimes the the exposure of the uh, mitral valve uh, uh, is difficult and you need to go to the roof of the left atrium, as we mentioned earlier about the cannulation strategies, so, uh, will with the two double stage uh, cannulation, uh, doing that would be probably uh, difficult and it will be in your way if you're going to extend your uh, incision for better exposure of the uh, mitral valve. Um, in case of excising the mitral uh, uh, valve, uh, 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 different approaches and different techniques depends on, the, depends on the underlying pathology. If the underlying pathology is rheumatic, uh, destroyed valve, and in, in many, in many times, the, uh, or mostly the, the whole valve is excised anterior and posterior uh, with sparing some of the cordae uh, attached to the to the muscle just to um, theoretically uh, help in reducing the uh, long-term dilatation of the ventricle um, however in some degenerative uh, pathologies uh, uh, preserving the uh, mitral apparatus uh, as much as you can excising uh, the bulk of the mitral uh, of the leaflet and placating it to, to the side uh, you can excise the uh, the uh, mitral uh, valve and you can push the whole apparatus to the to the posterior side and you take this your sutures uh, however that's also going to give a concern you and usually it's done by experienced surgeons because of the concern of uh, uh, LVOT obstruction, 
also uh, in this in this picture showing sizing ellipse of the anterior leaflet uh, and the rim of the anterior leaflet is attached to the anterior annulus Um, also, an important uh, thing about excising the, the, the leaflets uh, in rheumatic uh, patients is the uh, size of the valve. Sometimes if you don't excise uh, enough, you will not be able to put a good size uh, valve in rheumatic, in rheumatic mitostenosis patients. Um, so after putting your sutures, uh, you put the valve. the uh, valve um, and then uh, closing the uh, and then closing the uh, uh, left atrium uh, and interatrial uh, groove um, of course while closing the uh, groove the uh, question of uh, the structures to watch uh, to, to watch out for would be the pulmonary veins and many times if the incision is extending to the roof of the left atrium and you're taking the deep uh, sutures to avoid actually taking the SVC and narrowing the SVC and that uh, could happen. Uh, in case of aortic valve replacement and mitral valve uh, repair, intraoperative TE is useful for assessing degree of MR. So sternotomy cannulation, assessment of the aortic uh, valve and uh, to proceed, mitral valve repair depends on the operative findings. So, whether localized prolapse or, or of a portion of the posterior leaflet or ruptured cor cordae, whether it needs to be uh, repaired or uh, replaced. Uh, this picture from Lawrence showing a, uh, uh, a section of the flail uh, segment of uh, P2 and uh, doing a, sl a sliding annual plasty. So, basically, this part is uh, resected. And then sliding aneuplasty, you recut here and there, and then resuture it and reconstructing it in that uh, uh, in that uh, way. Uh, and then you're gonna put a ring at the end, which is a must uh, in all uh, mitral repairs. Um, in case of mitral valve replacement, tricuspid valve replacement uh, uh, or repair. So tricuspid valve regurgitation is caused by annular dilatation, severity determined by TEE uh, before bypass, as we uh, said before. Theoretically, yani it's, it's been said many times uh, or, or, or in the old days, they've, this digital exploration of the right atrium and you can feel the jet of the tricuspid regurgitation. However, this is not reliable. Uh, but you have to take into consideration patient clinical conditions, so echo finding and intraoperative assessment. Right sided heart failure required tricuspid valvuloplasty. Without uh, right side heart failure, uh, we mentioned that uh, that the uh, right uh, RV uh, function is very important in decision of the tricuspid intervention. Um, so uh, 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 decision of managing function of the tricuspid regurgitation at time of mitral valve replacement is important because the risk of subsequent reoperation is high. Operative mortality is 25% and TR progresses in 10 to 15%. Uh, in case of uh, mitral tricuspid, the procedure will be sternotomyotic cannulation, cannulation of IVC and SVC, cardiopulmonary bypass. Uh, and cardioplegia, uh, the cave is uh, uh, snared, uh, right atriotomy, and inspection of the tricuspid uh, uh, valve, exposure of the uh, mitral uh, valve, incision of the interatrial uh, septum, and uh, repair or replacement of the mitral valve. Uh, and then after the, uh, the uh, mitral valve is, uh, sorry, yeah. After the mitral valve is repaired or replacement, uh, then you go to the to the uh, tricuspid valve after causing the septum. Uh, again, uh, the vega or ring is usually used, and you, because with uh, rheumatic with mitral pathology, the um, you can uh, you gonna have the tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, again, with, depends 
cross clamp time or, or sorry bypass time uh you're gonna choose between the the vega uh, versus the annual plasty on uh, the uh, uh, long term again conflicting reports about that uh, addressing the tricuspid valve uh, as we can know the this is septal lift anterior posterior uh, av node um, as you can see with dilatation it's more of a circular shape uh, the normal shape is uh, more of an oval shape uh, by putting the ring, we, we are going to restore the uh, oval shape and rest restore competency of the valve. Uh, this is the, the Vega, again, usually. Using an AV block, um, so it's an incomplete ring. Uh, rings can come uh, flexible and rigid. Um, Abdullah. Hello, hello, yeah. Uh, ممكن تعيد من كلمة ديفيجا. We lost your voice. إيش قلت بعد ديفيجا? I don't know why every time I get yeah, getting, uh, yeah. because, because I'm getting um, alert that my connection is unstable although I'm connecting to the phone. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna sure. So yeah, so um, uh, so we have from the previous slide, I had. No, no, this one, integral to okay. the vega, but the hundred also. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, so again, um, so to, to address the uh, tricuspid uh, uh, valve, usually what it's done, you, uh, so as we know, the conduction uh, uh, tissues are here, so we take the, our sutures uh, and avoid the septal, uh, septal side, of, so septal leaflet, uh, uh, annulus side, uh, and then you can you have two choices for incomplete uh, ring band, uh, flexible and uh, rigid, um, uh, to restore the oval shape of the uh, tricuspid uh, valve. Uh, this is the the Vega. It's the same. Uh, it's the same concept. Here you're gonna take your sutures uh, uh, longitudinally, and then you're gonna take it here, and then you're gonna tie it. You somehow uh, you take your suture from here to there, and then you're gonna just shrink the annulus and it's going to fix it with the ring. Uh, with the De Vega, it's the same concept. You take your sutures uh, from here uh, to there, and then you're going to uh, uh, tie it and assess. Um, uh, you can use uh, Hager uh, dilators to put it inside, um, and you can uh, reassess it again. Uh, however, again, as we mentioned before, there is a concern about uh, long-term return of this uh, uh, TR. Uh, this is uh, the other technique would be bicuspidization of the tricuspid valve, where you um, um, uh, actually uh, place uh, a mattress suture from the anterior posterior and uh, posterior septal commissures uh, here and here, so so you're gonna actually bicuspidize the the uh, tricuspid uh, valve. Uh, I've seen it uh, um, once, and uh, it was not really that successful. Uh, just a last resort because of the attempts, uh, pre initial attempts did not help the tricuspid valve. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was an uh, Epstein. Uh, valve, uh, but uh, it failed. I'm not sure uh, how successful that technique is. Um, Abdullah, just one comment. Um, so the Vega usually is not that durable, as you mentioned. So we preserve it only for pediatrics, as we don't have option to put a ring in pediatrics. In adults, whenever we can, we put rings as it's more durable, as you just have mentioned. Uh, by hospitalization, uh, same things, only in pediatrics. Oh, Thank you. Okay. Uh, fourth would be tricuspid valve replacement and pulmonary valve replacement for uh, cardiac disease. So it can be performed without the need of aortic cross clamp and the cardioplegic arrest, knowing that the no mitral or aortic involvement, no patent uh, foramen or valley, avoid any strokes, of course, so that you have uh, the tricuspid and pulmonary valve. So it's only a right sided. Uh, uh, procedure. <clears throat> uh, so, strategy in the past would be replacement of tricuspid and ex excision of the pulmonary valve and leaving it. Recent strategy would be, of course, replacement of the tricuspid valve and the pulmonary valve. 
Uh, if the exposure is difficult, uh, brief periods of aortic cross clamp and cardioplegia uh, would help uh, in the accuracy and uh, the efficiency of the procedure. Uh, uh, pulmonary, uh, this is a picture showing pulmonary valve replacement. This is from uh, Lawrence. Uh, reconstruction of the right ventricular outflow tract. So by, this is a bioprocesis with a uh, patch uh, overlay. You, you would see this uh, a lot in uh, probably the pediatric uh, or congenital population, and uh, not uh, really common in the uh, uh, at all in the uh, adult pathology uh, population. Um, the different techniques, uh, continuous or interrupted, mostly what have been, been seen is continuous uh, sutures, it's faster, uh, um, um, usually you don't have that much risk of uh, paraviral leak with a low pressure uh, system uh, to avoid at the posterior side, the left uh, uh, main, uh, not to go too, de too deep. And to uh, and the surrounding structures, um, uh, and you can use uh, as 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 I as I mentioned uh, patch uh, to oversize uh, to to go for a bit bigger size uh, valve for a triple valve uh, replacement. Uh, in case of aortic valve regurgitation, the aortotomy is uh, performed uh, first. Uh, snare the cave uh, um, so. Um, Sending the cave open the right atrium, excision of the aortic valve, and calibration of the annulus. Uh, interatrial septum is incised, and the mitral valve is repaired or replaced. The aortic valve is implanted, uh, closure of the aortotomy and septot septotomy, and uh, tricuspid valve, uh, valve plasty or prosthetic replacement can be performed uh, without uh, aortic uh, cross clamp. Um, this is uh, the end of uh, my presentation here. Uh, I don't know if we have uh, time. Uh, it's 1.50 now. We can uh, uh, show uh, just uh, a video of the commando procedure, a double valve, or uh, it's uh, like a rough seven, eight minutes video. Probably going to show part of it. Anyway, I, I can just send it in the uh, group and uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, Bella, we have time, I think. If you want to show it, just show it. Okay, sure. Hey, uh, excuse me. I have a question for uh, Dr. Mariam regarding the aortic bulb and mitral bulb replacement. Yes, please. Sultan, you had a question? Can you hear me up there now? No, Elhin, yes. Question regarding the aortic and mitral valve replacement. Uh, I don't know if uh, Dr. Mariam, she's... Uh, she, 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 she can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, because uh, she said uh, we are doing uh, uh, the first uh, resect the uh, leaflet of aortic valve. Then uh, put the suture for mitral and mitral valve. Then we go back. Uh, I don't know, uh, doctor, if you are with it because I saw some surgeon or many of surgeons they resect the leaflet of aortic valve. Then they put the sutures of aortic valve. Then they go for mitral and back. Is that uh, for good uh, installation of suture the, for good exposure or uh, for uh, sizing of uh, the uh, aortic valve itself. Yeah. I mean, okay. are you with that or not? Yeah. So the main, the most important things is that you resect the aortic valve leaflet 
Okay, and then you go, you do the aortic valve repair or replacement, and then you come back for the aortic valve. Now, the timing of putting the aortic valve sutures is maybe just to save time. He's there, he's op he opened the aorta, right? He rejected the, the main, the main important things is to reject the leaflet, okay? And then to put the sutures is up to you. Do you want to put suture now? You want to you wanna do, do, uh, put it after you come after the mitral valve? It's really up to you. There is no clinical importance of the timing of the aortic valve sutures. My personal preference is that I would resect the aortic valve leaflet, leave it, go do the mitral valve work, either repair or replacement. And then I will come to the aortic valve, I'll resize. As you know, um, after putting a prosthesis in the mitral valve, this, the previous sizing of the aortic valve may change and it will, it will be smaller. So if, if you initially size 25, after putting a mitral valve, you come back, it probably can be 21. Okay, so if you put your sutures, then you limited uh, the option of resizing. You خلاص, you're fixed to the previous size, so you may struggle putting the or pushing the uh, the the valve in. Do you get my yeah. point? Yes, yes. Yeah, so you spare your you spare yourself of resizing again. Make sure that you didn't oversize the mitral valve because a lot of cases, if you oversize the mitral valve, you will undersize the aortic valve. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you put it before, but you prefer to put it after, just no, okay. not to uh, change yeah. the size. Yeah, because yeah. I want to resize. I want to resize yeah. and double check that the the valve that I chose, it's not now smaller than what uh, after the mitral valve replace, after the mitral valve implantation. Okay. And Thank it's you. very Thank important you. that you don't open the aortic valve. So once you size it, you size it at say 25, ask for the 25 to be, for example, in, but do not open it. Do the mitral valve, resize again. If it's confirmed still 25, then open 25 because a lot of cases that it may not be 25 anymore, it will be less. Yeah, I guess you're fine. Thank you. No problem. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, can I add uh, something regarding Sultan point uh, of putting the suture of the aortic valve before going to the mitral valve? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think maybe the reason is uh, they want uh, to do their uh, preliminary sizing with the pledget in place because uh, the pledget uh, will make uh, a aortic valve with a small annulus maybe smaller. So that will make them closer to the actual size when they will put the valve. Uh, mm. Is that a, th a true theory or uh, because this is I... what I suspected they do it uh, like this because when they put the pledget, the, the annulus will be tighter. That's why. Mm -hmm. Usually, the pledget will not change the valve size from one size to a, to a different one. So, yes, you. that's why, like the way I was trained, that we size without the pledget in. But when we put, you know, the sizer, we we have to, you know, uh, when, when the sizer has to pass easily. If it's mm -hmm. very tight, we know that after putting the, the pledget, it will be tighter. Right. So yeah. uh, it's really depends of how comfortable when you're sizing, you know, it's very subjective. The way that I was trained that we will pass the sizer and it has to pass very easily without mm -hmm. the. And then we don't resize after the budget in. And understand. we know that we will be able to push it in. Uh, now, you know, everybody has his own, uh, you know, preference. If you will put the budget in and then you will put the sizer, then you it's OK. Uh, you have to really pass it because, you know, it's going to be smaller. I understand, Doctor. Thank you very much. You're welcome. In case, uh, in case the aortic root or aortic annulus would uh, need a enlargement, uh, that uh, would be done. Uh, I was thinking that would be done in case of aortic and mitral. That would be done at the same. At a, <clears throat> at a later stage uh, or before replacing the mitral uh, valve. I understand it um, depends on the technique, like uh, let's say uh, the uh, NICS or even the, the new technique, the y root enlargement. Uh, uh, I believe it can be done at a later, uh, after the mitral valve replacement. Uh, what do you think, Dr. Maria? Uh, now, again, if you size initially, and you know this is very small, and you will probably need to do aortic uh, uh, root replacement, 
you, you may want to, for example, do the, the enlargement root enlargement before you do the uh, mitral valve. So then when you're back, you have everything's ready to do the aortic valve. It will be very difficult, especially if you're gonna do menungian um, uh, root uh, enlargement after the mitral valve then. I see. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mariam. Uh, thank you, everyone. That's the end of my presentation. Okay, uh, thank you, Abdullah, for this uh, informative presentation. And thank you, Dr. Maryam, for answering the questions. Uh, is there any other question? Okay, uh, so um, we will take like a five minutes uh, breaks, uh, then we will start with the second lecture. Uh, we can start at 2.05. Uh,
دكتور عبير القاندي Yes, hello. Hello. Okay. Uh, are you ready, Doctora? Yes. Okay. Uh, so now we can start with the second lecture uh, by the title of Surgical Management of Mitral and Tricuspid Endocarditis with Dr. Abir al -Ghandi. You can start, Doctor. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, my topic will be about surgical management of mitral and tricuspid valve endocarditis. Our lecture will be about indication for surgery, timing of surgery, operative technique. We'll go through general principles, native mitral valve endocarditis, anterior leaflet repair and posterior leaflet repair, prosthetic valve endocarditis, reconstruction of the mitral annulus and reconstruction of the fibrous trigons. I'll we'll talk about right valve leaflet repair and augmentation, tricuspid valve placement. Stick with starting with indication for surgery. Uh, in addition with the infected carditis, uh, present with valve dysfunction, resulting in symptoms of heart failure, early surgery during hospitalization, and formulation even of antibiotic plasma indication. Dr. Uh We cannot hear you, Dr. Abir. Are you still with us? Uh, I, I think it's uh, the uh, connection, but it does not. Uh, Dr. Abir, we cannot hear you. Dr. Abir, you can hear me or? Uh, is the voice is clear now? Uh, yeah, we can hear you now. But we cannot see your slides. Yes, I prefer. So in all patients with the definitive endocarditis and an implanted cardiac uh, electronic device, complete removal of the pacemaker or defibrillator system include uh, all leads Dr. and... Dr. Abir? No. Uh, I, I cannot see your presentation, your slides. Okay. Now? Can you see it now? Um, I can. I cannot see anything. Okay, now I can see them. Yes. Okay. All <clears throat> uh, patients with dizziness endocarditis and an implanted cardiac electronic device, complete removal of the pacemaker or defibrillator system, including all leads and generator, is indicated. A prospective cohort study has shown that a patient with cardiac device infected endocarditis, the rates of both committed valve and valve mortality are high, particularly if there is a valve dysfunction. The survival benefit at one year for device removal during the initial hospitalization is 19.9 for patients who underwent device removal during the index hospitalization. And they had died at one year. percent who undergo device removal. For patients with 
valve enterocarditis and relapse infection. And it's defined as recurrence of bacteremia after a complete course of antibiotic and subsequent negative blood pressure result without other identifiable source of infection, surgery is a class one recommendation. In addition with infected endocarditis who present with recurrent implied and resistant vegetation, despite appropriate antibiotic therapy, surgery during initial hospitalization and before completion of the course of antibiotic is a class 2A recommendation. Uh, infections are uh, associated with increased morbidity and mortality in infected endocarditis and occur in 20% to 40% of patients with infected endocarditis. So, during the first days of initiation of antibiotic treatment and after two weeks. In public incidence uh, decreased to 9% to 21% uh, respectively after initiation of antibiotic treatment. Factors associated with a new embolic event are vegetation size more than 10 mm and marked vegetation mobility, especially when associated with the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. Um, in patients with infective endocarditis, an indication, an, an indication for surgery who have suffered a stroke but have no evidence of intracranial hemorrhage or extensive neurological damage, operation down delay may be considered. As in an observational study that uh, did adjust for factors such as age, bilateral abscess, and heart failure, the risk of an in-hospital death was not significantly higher in the group who underwent surgery with a median time from patient to operation of five days, with only a 1% risk of perioperative hemorrhagic conversion. For patients with uh, infective endocarditis and major stroke with extensive neurological damage or intracranial hemorrhage, if the patient is hemodynamically stable, delaying valve surgery for at least four weeks may be considered. As there is one multicenter observational study showed wide variation in patient death, it was 50% in patients whose surgery was performed in the first weeks, 50% in patients whose surgery was performed in the third week, and 20% in patients whose surgery was performed at least 21 days after the neurological event. So now to move to timing of surgery, decision about the timing of intervention for tuberculosis, it should be by a heart valve team. It's a class of radiation. The operation should not be late when surgical and Important to know the sensitivity of the organism to ensure appropriate antibiotic coverage at the time of surgery. Uh, early surgery is required uh, for patients with locally uncontrollable infection, native valve endocarditis. In prosthetic valve endocarditis, uh, early surgery should be done before it's uh, become complicated by uh, heart failure, severe prosthetic dysfunction, or abscess. Delaying surgery, uh, if it is of cerebral complication and uh, pre op should be uh, a neurological evaluation and CT MRI should be done. Uh, we can delay it for one to two weeks in patients with non hemorrhagic stroke and for more than four weeks in patients with hemorrhagic strokes. I'll move to the operative technique, we'll talk about general principle. Optimal timing of surgery is important. TE in all cases is mandatory. Retard manipulation before aortic cross clamp, minimize of MLI for vegetations, good exposure of the valve, radical resection of all and necrotic tissue, and it will be difficult uh, de uh, debridement in the mitral uh, cases with AV roof, invasion, necrosis, and abscess. I uh, should to change after the diet. Antibiotic treatment is mandatory. Start with native mitral valve. Uh, for native valve endocarditis, uh, our approach is to attempt to be feasible. Successful repair can be achieved by an experienced surgeon in up to 80% of patients. If repair is not technically feasible and valve replacement is needed, the choice of tissue or mechanical valve is based primarily on consideration of age, life expectancy, presence of comorbidities, and compliance with anticoagulation. Uh, operation for uh, native valve uh, endocarditis are best conducted through a formal stronotomy. Cannulation for cardiopulmonary bypass involves the arterial return, uh, arterial return via the ascending aorta and bicardial cannulation venous drainage. It is advisable to assist for manipulating too much. Myocardial protection is achieved using integrate and retrograde blood cardiology. After that, the mitral valve is exposed either via left atriotomy through the intraatrial group or transitively through the right atrium. Once the exposure of the mitral valve is accomplished, the valve is evaluated to assess for presence of abscess or intracardiac or 
valvular fibrous body involvement, uh, radical resection uh, of all uh, necrotic tissue is. And the specimen are divided into prototic and microbiological culture. Uh, uh, now about the uh, anterior leaflet repair. repair the anterior leaflet uh, perforation using a patch with autologous pericardium. It's uh, followed by annuloplasty to augment the uh, the bar. For the posterior uh, leaflet repair, uh, the real is the uh, posterior leaflet. Uh, it's frequently affected by process. It can be performed with angular regular section of the scallop. A slight repair is for to, to close the gap between the remaining two scallops. So, a segment of the serial leaf is dissected, a portion of the leaf uh, detached from the annulus. After that, leaf returns are sutured to the annulus, taking deep bites and leaf high. The edges are re approximated in the center and annulastic complete the repair. Uh, now, to the uh, 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 can you hear my voice now? Yes. Okay. I lost connection and just connected to another Wi-Fi. Uh, can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. Uh, so for the synthetic valve uh, endocarditis, uh, usually do reconstruction of the mitral annulus. So once exposure of the mitral valve is obtained, uh, the infected species is removed and the annulus to bride it uh, of all old uh, suture materials and bloodshed. Uh, mitral valve, uh, prosthetic valve endocarditis may produce separation of the left atrium, left ventricle, and prosthesis. In this situation, uh, the operation include uh, 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 debridement of the annulus with subsequent annulus reconstruction using uh, pericardium, and it's uh, uh, this called uh, David technique. So with this technique, a semicircular uh, pericardial batch uh, is used to reconstruct the annulus uh, uh, with one side of the batch sutured to the endocardium of the left ventricle and the other side to the left atrium. This batch covers the cavity, which must uh, be uh, thoroughly debrided and sterilized before the batch is affixed. The new valve prosthesis is affixed uh, to this reconstructed annulus. Uh, now uh, uh, we'll talk about reconstruction of the fibrous trigons and the intravalvular fibrous. Uh, extension of uh, prosthetic valve endocarditis into the intravalvular fibrous trigon required reconstruction of the intravalvular fibrosa as well as replacement of both the aortic and mitral valve by using autologs or bovine uh, uh, bricardia. So uh, perfect exposure is mandatory, whether it is uh, provided by the extended uh, transeptal approach or by dividing the superior vena cava and extending the left atriotomy from uh, anterior to the right superior pulmonary vein toward the doom of the left atrium. 
Uh, this approach allows the brightening of the aortic and mitral valve, as well as the fibrous trigons. The prosthetic mitral valve is then uh, sewn uh, normally to the annulus uh, posteriorly, medially and laterally, and the uh, anterior part uh, uh, skipped. Uh, after that, we can see that uh, the, uh, the superior portion of the mitral valve annulus is reconstructed with a bricardial batch that support and replace the intravalvular fibers. This patch is anchored to the mitral valve annulus um, uh, and the uh, sewing ring of the prosthesis uh, far enough back where the mitral annulus is still preserved. Once the mitral valve is sutured in place, uh, the aortic valve prosthesis is affixed uh, to the aortic annulus. Uh, now we'll move to the tricuspid valve endocarditis. Uh, drug use associated endocarditis is associated with a significantly higher complexity of care with increased rate of readmission, reinfection, and recurrent need for repeat intervention. And its incidence has risen 12-fold uh, over the past decade. Uh, addiction specialties are an important part of the heart uh, valve team for this uh, patient population and it's a class one recommendation. The tricuspid valve can be repaired uh, in nearly every patient with endocarditis. Batch closure of a perforation is performed in a similar manner uh, to mitral valve perforation. More liberal leaflet excision can be accomplished on the tricuspid valve and should be supported with complete aneuroplasty. In extensive infections, total excision of the tricuspid valve is possible if pulmonary pressure and the pulmonary vascular resistance are not elevated. Blood flows passively through the right side of the heart to the lungs. After eradication of the infection, a second stage procedure with valve replacement can be performed month to year later. The choice of the prosthesis uh, follows an algorithm similar to that used for valve replacement uh, in other cardiac valve position. Uh, we will consider the patient age, anticoagulation consideration, child bearing wishes, and social issues are all factors in valve choice. So for uh, tricuspid valve leaflet repair and augmentation, Usually, a large vegetation uh, is shown in the posterior leaflet on the tricuspid uh, valve are often combined by a mirror vegetation on the corresponding leaflet. So before any leaflet intervention, uh, annuloplasty suture are placed, uh, but not tight. Approximately 10 interrupted suture are placed from the 10 o'clock position to the 6 o'clock position from the surgeon view within the tricuspid valve annulus, taking care to avoid injury to the AV node. In addressing the large vegetation uh, showing, the majority of the posterior leaflet is excised, while the mirror vegetation on the anterior leaflet is also excised, within consideration given to maintaining leaflet margin adequate to sew a repair patch. Uh, Buffin pericardium is utilized to create uh, two oversized patches. The larger patch is uh, sewn to the uh, tricuspid annulus, adjacent to the remi rem reminder of the posterior leaflet, with a proline suture and joined with the remaining septal leaflet to functionally bicuspitalize the tricuspid valve. The smaller batch is then sewn directly into the anterior leaflet with, the, with suture replacement away from the resection hole. Most important, importantly, the batches should be sufficiently oversized to be sewing uh, into non-compromised tissue. To further restore the function uh, to the uh, uh, now bicuspitalized uh, tricuspid valve posterior septal leaflet, new cords are added. We create freehand loops with the new cord sutures anchored in each uh, papillary muscle. The united annuloblasty suture are passed through a semi-rigid partial annuloblasty ring, tied into place and cut. Importantly, this step occurs before tying down the new cord, since the resultant geometry of the tricuspid valve annulus change after securing the partial annuloplasty ring. Subsequently, the new cords are tied into place at the height of the annulus. Uh, in case uh, of leaflet perforation or small defect uh, uh, localized to one or two leaflets, it can be repaired by either direct closure or batch plasty using an autolog pericardial batch. Uh, now we'll move to the last option for tricuspid valve, uh, uh, effective uh, tricuspid valve is tricuspid valve replacement. Uh, tricuspid valve excision, uh, leaving two millimeter margin uh, of the septal leaflet uh, tissue adjacent to the annulus. A uh, bleached uh, suture uh, placed, start placing at the apex of the triangle of Koch and uh, make sure to uh, take care to not uh, injure the uh, conduction system. Uh, after that, started with the bleached 2O at the annulus anteriorly. The prosthesis is attached to the annulus by continuous uh, stitches to O proline.
So uh, the uh, objective of the surgical intervention for infected pentacarditis are to debride and remove infected tissue and foreign materials, generous irrigation, and uh, surgery is recommended as soon as a surgical indication is established. Thank you. Abir? No. Just a question for you. Have you um, come across any other uh, surgical approach to deal with the tricuspid valve endocarditis in the presence of IV drug user? I cannot hear you, voice. <laughs> Sorry, my question was, have you come across any other surgical approach to deal with the tricuspid valve um, infective endocarditis in a patient known to have IV drug abuse? Um, no, I'm not sure actually. Anyone else have an answer or uh, came across this situation? I think, Victoria, you mean resecting the valve uh, leaflet and keep it without the valve? Yes, valvectomy. Okay, so valvectomy is one of the options for patients, IV drug user. And uh, any surgeon look at it from two different views. One of them would consider valvectomy only um, for IV drug user if he come with a recurrent tricuspid valve infection. Uh, meaning if uh, IV drug uh, user came for the first time with a tricuspid valve endocarditis, uh, the general approach is to refer him to the addiction uh, center and you know engage him for, in the program. Uh, but in the meantime, you would want to operate and do the optimal surgery, like for example, aortic valve repair if possible, or aortic valve replacement, okay? Um, let's say this patient came back he did not, uh, you know, uh, be still using IV drug, and he came back with now prosthetic valve infective endocarditis after you put it. So do you think this patient um, uh, deserve a redo operation to redo the valve surgery for him? So the second opinion of a uh, surgeon would say, you gave him the first um, uh, opportunity. He did not, for example, you know, uh, be still an IV drug user. So the second operation will be, it's okay, redo, but I don't trust this patient anymore, so I'll do valvectomy. So then he won't come. Even if he continue to use IV drug use, there is no valve uh, for the bacteria to catch in. Okay, so he won't come for another uh, infective endocarditis. Of course, in the cost of long-term RV dysfunction. But we know IV drug use, they have 10, um, 10 fold increased risk of death compared to infective, any yeah, tricuspid valve infective endocarditis without IV drug abuse. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. yes. I have a question. So, valvectomy just for uh, IV drug abuser. What about yes. if the valve is severely infected? Uh, there is, uh, I can tell uh, it's written that uh, if the patient has severely infected valve, they can remove, do valvectomy and uh, keep the, and do uh, stages uh, procedure. After months or a year later, they can uh, do the valve procedure. Is this for the IV drug abuser or for the patient with severely infected uh, endocarditis? Okay, so I agree with the IV drug user because the main idea of it, that there is high risk that the patient will come back with another infection. Okay, uh, so one of them, uh, the other, you know, uh, school of uh, thinking, they would say, even if the first time this patient IV drug user, I'll do valvectomy, and then I will follow up with this patient, see if he's like, you know, um, a commitment, he has a commitment to the, uh, the uh, with the program of addiction, then I would bring him back and give him the chance of putting a new valve in. If he's still, um, you know, have this uh, abuse, then we will keep him without valve. Now, if you come to the second uh, group of patients, those without IV drug use, but with severe valve infection, uh, it's, it's mentioned in the textbooks and some of the uh, articles that some surgeon would do this, but I don't see, I don't see why you do like a good resection and good debridement of the tissue. Uh, if there is any weak, um, uh, 
you know, spot that you can patch it and you can put uh, uh, sorry tricuspid valve replacement at the same time and you spare the patient from a redo surgery. Thank you, Dr. Mayor. You're welcome. Can this be be done without any issues from ethical point of view, or uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, legal uh, point of view also? To me, yeah, valvectomy. Yes, valvectomy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So ethically, um, uh, yeah. From the Western countries, they have a lot of IV drug abuser. They have a lot of infected tricuspid valve infected endocarditis. So it's uh, it's usually discussed with the patient and see how uh, you know how much he's committed to uh, to quit addiction. And sometimes you'd have to discuss that if you will continue, then uh, the best uh, option for you is actually the best is not threatening the patient of removing the valve. It's actually the best option for him is to remove the valve to spare him from another infective endocarditis episode. So there is no ethical problem with it. It's actually for the patient's benefit. Now, what's the ethical um, point of view here in uh, Saudi I don't know. I've, يعني, I've never heard of similar situation, but I would think the same. Because in general, you can document this is for the patient's own benefit to avoid him or to spare him from having a uh, redo surgery. But I mean, on the other hand, you spare the patient from a redo surgery, but um, yeah. it goes with the expense of uh, the current hospitalization and the cost of the hospital. Uh, yeah, usually, uh, yeah, usually severe T, isolated severe TR and isolated severe pulmonary regurgitation is very well tolerated, as we can, we've uh, noticed this even in the pediatric population. Uh, so you would wait for years and years until you have... Um, RV dysfunction from this severe TR. Uh, so if you look at it and you weigh the benefit and the risk for this patient, if you put the valve in and he continue at, uh, on IV drug abuse, he will come back with infective endocarditis within months or maybe one or two years. However, if you removed it, um, he may not come back with severe RV dysfunction until 10 years later, if he like managed to survive. Okay, thank you. If he managed to survive, I mean, from the addiction, you know, he didn't like have overdose or something. Uh, doctor? Yes? What about the ethical point of view of non-IV uh, drug user valvectomy? Yeah, I've, I've never, I've never, we've never discussed this before. So, so the only valvectomy um, uh, is indicated for IV drug abuse. And again, in very certain situation where we think this patient will not uh, quit, okay? Or he's not committed uh, to the program or some of them, they will refuse. They said, no, I don't want to quit, right? He will continue an IV drug abuse. Uh, so then you would uh, discuss valvectomy with him. Uh, for non-IV drug abuse, I do, I do not generally recommend because uh, I think uh, now with the advancement of improvement of the surgical technique and with the uh, improvement of antibiotic, um, I think we can uh, do um, a good deprivement of the infective endocarditis, keep the patient on antibiotic and uh, put a new valve in and the same admission. Okay, thank you, doctor. Uh, there is any other question or comments? Okay, uh, thank you, Abir, uh, for this presentation. So do you want, guys, a uh, five-minute break or we can go to the third lecture? Uh, sorry, guys, I would have to leave now. I have teaching sessions starting um, now. Um, I posted a few scenario in the chat. Please go through it and try to answer and uh, send me even in the private WhatsApp uh, if you have any question about them. It's very important to understand, like, if you have this situation, what do you want? What, what would you do? Which valve you will, uh, for example, uh, intervene on? Do you have to intervene in both valve uh, or not? Thank you very much. And please uh, do the survey if possible. Thank you.
I think we can start immediately. Um, because it didn't take long time for the second lecture. Okay. If you agree with that, guys. Okay, thank you, Dr. Marian, again. Um, the third presenter, uh, Dr. Abdul, Abdul Karim, are you ready? Uh, yes, I'm ready. Okay, you want to present now? Yeah. Okay, can you upload your presentation and you can start? Sure. Okay, can you, can you guys see my screen? Uh, yes, we can see it now. Okay. All right, so... Um, Assalamu alaikum, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm uh, Abdul Karim al Bukhdir R1 from uh, Medina Cardiac Center. So for this journal club, I chose um, the uh, coronary trial, which is uh, basically assessing the short-term and long-term outcomes of off-pump versus on-pump uh, cabbage. I know today was all about valves, but we're going back to uh, coronaries right now. And they do have a 30-day uh, a 30, a 30 uh, paper and also one year and a five year. So the 30 day and the one year were the short term and the five year was the long term. I'll be discussing all of them. <clears throat> so the clinical question was in patients undergoing uh, coronary artery bypass grafting surgery, uh, is there a difference in the short and long term efficacy and safety of off pump compared with on pump cabbage? As we know, uh, cabbage reduces mortality in patients with severe ischemic heart disease. Um, the, um, most people use the uh, cardiopulmonary bypass machine, also known as the pump. And it allows surgeons to, you know, to rest the heart and perform, we could say, uh, an anastomosis in a more uh, relaxed environment. And uh, however, the use of this does have, does come with its uh, complications, not uh, very massive uh, uh, or serious complications. However, they are, uh, there are a few such as stroke, uh, neurocognitive uh, dysfunction, renal dysfunction, uh, need for blood transfusion, atrial fibrillation, and so on. Um, <clears throat> and really, the longer you are on this machine, the more likely you are to have uh, these complications. On the other hand, we have the off-pump uh, surgery, which is without the, the cabbage, the, without the, uh, the bypass machine. And uh, it's actually very interesting. You finish grafting the lima, and then you're suddenly you just start going ahead with the cabbage. It, it, it's interesting because it's it's faster. Um, the operation length you feel is, is is shorter than having to put the patient on the machine. Um, you just use these stabilizers over here. <clears throat> um, so you see the blue one on the on the left, and then there's the the green one on the right. I haven't really seen the green one being used, the one that's attached to the apex. Um, you could do it just with the with the blue one, which is the coronary stabilizer. And the other one is the apical uh, vacuum stabilizer. So you just put them on a stabilizer and then you, um, uh, um, you go through the coronary and then you introduce a intraluminal shunt. Some people use it in on pump too, because it, uh, I guess gives them some some good visual and also if there's any blood, uh, it'll prevent that from, from appearing. So we use this shunt. The shunt keeps the blood flowing through the coronaries while the heart is working. And then the uh, bypass is, uh, is performed. So the coronary trial is a large prospective multi-center RCT with blinded and adjudicated outcome assessments of off-pump off and on-pump. Uh, 4,752 patients from 79 centers and 19 countries. It is by far the largest uh, RCT uh, to date comparing off-pump and on-pump. Um, I chose this trial because it's uh, compared to the other uh, 
ICT's done. This one, I, I think, is is the is the is the best made uh, at the moment. They they um, really the limitations are uh, are obscure in, in this uh, in this trial. Whereas in the other trials, you might find a lot of limitations that hurt either either legs of the of the trial. Um, <clears throat> so we'll see that while we go on. So the inclusion criteria. Uh, anyone eligible for cabbage, they have to be eligible for both on pump and off pump. So if a patient came and they they said that oh, we can't do this guy on pump or we can't do him off pump, then he was rejected from the study. He had to be able to do both. That way the randomization wouldn't uh, hurt the patient. So there was an intention to treat uh, trial. Um, median sternotomy, uh, written consent above the age of 21, and also to have one of the following risk factors, either older than 70 years old, or having some sort of peripheral vascular disease or cerebrovascular disease, uh, renal insufficiency, or to be 60 to, nine, to 69 years old with one of the following, diabetes, urgent revascularization, LV uh, function less than 35%, or a current or recent smoker. Um, and later on, they also included uh, uh, people aged 55 to 59 with two of the risk factors uh, mentioned above, which are the diabetes, the urgent revascularization, LV, and uh, being a smoker. So you can already sense that the, 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 the patients themselves were a little bit more um, high risk than, than you would expect. Usually they just take in all the patients. Over here, they were actually looking for people that were let's say medium risk, at least. Um, exclusion criteria is anyone with concomitant cardiac procedures, contraindications to one of the, uh, one of the legs, um, a life-threatening disease that limited the life expectancy to less than two years, uh, emergency cabbage surgery and redo cabbage. So those patients are excluded. Uh, next, we go on to surgeon selection. Um, this is important because um, there is one of the other big trials, which is the Ruby trial. Um, not to say I prefer either one of on pump or off pump, but it's but it's it's fair to say that they uh, they weren't fair to the off pump leg in terms of experience. Um, the median uh, amount of cases in the surgeons in the Ruby trial was fifty, um, compared to the uh, coronary trial, which didn't include any surgeon with less than hundred cases. Um, for either off pump or on pump, and with greater than two years of experience, and they also didn't include residents and fellows, which is uh, which it wasn't seen in the Ruby trial, which they did include residents and fellows doing the off pump uh, surgeries. So the level the level of expertise really uh, differed, and it's good to have both studies that way you can see if 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 that one was if if surgeon selection actually did have a difference or an advantage. Um, compared to not having uh, surgical experience. So previous trials criticized, uh, have been criticized for the inexperience of off-pump cabbage surgeons to explain poor results and excess of graft occlusion. <coughs> Methods, so after obtaining written consent, the patients were allocated to undergo off-pump or on-pump using a 24-hour automated voice activated telephone randomization service. Um, patients I see in the office at 30 days, one year, and then for the final visit, which was around five years um, as an average. And they also received an annual telephone uh, phone call, um, you know, just to check if they had any complications or any of the primary outcomes were, were met. Um, they actually had a uh, co-primary outcomes and co-secondary outcomes. They're essentially the same thing which was death, non-fatal stroke, non-fatal uh, MI, or a non-fatal new renal failure requiring dialysis uh, at 30 days and one year. And for the secondary, it was, it was the same, except this was at five years. And they also included repeat revascularization. So uh, the difference uh, in the outcomes were the, were the time, the primary and the secondary. So the first two studies, which are the 30 days and the one year, addressed the primary outcome, and the and the last study, which was the five year, addressed the secondary outcome. They even have their actually they have their study design uh, published as well, which is which they published it before uh, almost before starting the study. 
it was interesting. You got to really go in and see uh, how, how how good this uh, study design was actually made, um, and the care they took in selecting the surgeons and selecting the the centers. Um, <clears throat> So going on with the results, the first thing I'm going to mention is the perioperative events. Um, for off-pump, I think this is really where the off-pump uh, technique um, or the off-pump surgeons see their benefit, which is the short-term uh, events. For example, um, so we can see here blood transfusion, uh, was seen less in off-pump, antifibrillinic uh, agents, Reoperation for ble uh, for bleeding, uh, operating room hours, uh, ventilation hours. Um, these were all in favor of off pump, including as well respiratory failure or infection, uh, acute kidney injury stage one or more. Um, AFib wasn't wasn't seen to to be uh, significantly different between the groups. However, as we said, AKI respiratory failure, infection, blood transfusion. Uh, reoperation for bleeding. I mean, these are all things that we've we've seen previously, and uh, even in smaller RCTs, we see this uh, this perioperative outcome. Of course, this is uh, of course the the other thing we see here is incomplete revascularization and total grafts performed, and that was in favor for the on pump. Um, <clears throat> for the on pump, uh, total grafts performed were three point two. Of an off pump, it was uh, three, and for inc incomplete revascularization as well, we can see it is uh, a p value of zero point zero five. Um, therefore, it is uh, significant in terms of incomplete revascularization. Um, characteristics: the characteristics were pretty much a match between the two groups. Uh, the age was around uh, sixty-seven. Uh, a, a little bit older than uh, than the other trials we've seen in terms of age. The the gender was uh, eighty percent a male, which is more like a real life uh, uh, situation. Um, we have other trials, for example, the Ruby trial was done in a, it was done for veterans, um, so they had nearly a hundred percent male. I think it was like zero point two percent female. So we see how this 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 study is maybe a little bit more balanced and more real life uh, scenarios. Um, everything else was matched. We had MI. Um, they also divided here the Euro scores, zero to two, three to five, and then greater than five. Also quite balanced between the the two groups. So going on to the primary. So the first. Two uh, tables are the primary outcomes, and then the uh, the last table is the secondary outcome, which, as we said, is just the difference between the time. Um, so these were all taken from different studies. They were all published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, table on top is the 30 days. The table on the bottom is the one year. Uh, we can see they were matched with, with the primary outcome. Um, there was no difference between either the uh, total composite of the primary outcome or even in terms of looking at the primary outcomes uh, separately, death, MI, stroke, new renal failure requiring dialysis, they were pretty much matched between all the groups for the 30 days, for the one year, and then as well for the five years. Uh, these were the primary outcomes. <clears throat> Over here, we had other outcomes that they also looked at. Again, these tables are also, the type, table on top is the 30 days, and then you have one year in the middle, and then the last one is the, the five year. And we can also, also see that you know, there wasn't really any significant difference between uh, any of the groups and any of the values, uh, except for a repeat revascularization, which was, uh, which was higher in the off-pump group for uh, 16 patients out of 2,330 compared to four patients out of uh, 2,328. And they were mainly done uh, using PCI, not, uh, not redo uh, cabinet surgeries. Um, and then at the one year as well, we, we see the same thing. 
with the repeat revascularization, a little bit leaning towards, again, the, uh, the uh, off-pump group. And then finally, at five years, there was uh, no difference between death or repeat coronary angiography or recurrent angina. Um, you have the capital Meyer curve here for the primary outcomes at 30 days, which is on the left. And then on the right side, we have the same thing, but at one year. And then at the bottom, they have it for five years. And the, they were essentially the composite outcomes were similar um, during this whole, uh, this whole timeline for both on pump and off pump. There was no difference in the uh, primary outcomes, which are the major outcomes, essentially. They also looked at cost. <clears throat> cost here was uh, essentially they they found it to be ninety six dollars more expensive for the off pump in terms of an average, which is well we'll, we'll talk about that. There was a, a limitation over here, so we will address that later on. But this is the number that they came out with about ninety six dollars um, more for the off pump, which is weird because we know that off pump is usually uh, uh, cheaper to uh, perform. Um, and then finally, a hazard ratio for the second co-primary outcomes. So this is at the five year. I didn't include the, there. there is a table at the one year and the two year, however, they're basically similar. So I just included the five year. <clears throat> so there was really no difference between uh, sex, uh, stroke. They didn't see a difference in stroke either, which is, uh, uh, well, we will discuss that in the discussion. Same thing for age. Uh, Euroscore was a little bit um, kind of shifting toward the off pump every time they would, uh, the patients would have a high, higher Euroscore. We could see the, the dots kind of shifting more towards the, uh, the off pump uh, group. Everything else was pretty much matched. They did find uh, diabetes to be favoring the off pump, however, no other trials really found this before, and they they said that uh, we shouldn't really take this into account. Um, there would need to be like a larger study that is powered toward this um, to really answer that question. Um, so those were those were the results. Does anybody have any uh, input right now before we get into the discussion? Um, about off pump. Anybody have any experience in off pump? Well, I'm currently working in uh, the military hospital in, in uh, Jeddah, and it's essentially in sixty percent maybe of patients go for off pump surgery. Um, that is the uh, surgical preference over there at the moment. Um, they have three surgeons, and two of them are more uh, leaning towards doing off-pump cases than on-pump cases, for whatever reasons. Um, so I've seen a few for now. If anybody has any, any uh, comments or anything they want to add about this study or any other study, please do while I get into the discussion. So as we said, perioperative events is something we've seen in, in other RCTs as well. As we said, you know, um, requiring blood transfusion, uh, reoperation for surgery as well was also positive in the study, uh, seen more in, uh, in on the on-pump. Um, as we said, less time in the war, less time on the ventilation. These are all the, really, you, you see the patients, um, the operation goes fast, goes smooth. They're off the ventilation very quickly. Uh, the short term is, is very smooth. The question here, it's, it, it, it's kind of leaning towards the off pump in terms of the short term uh, um, outcomes and just how fast the patients essentially leave the hospital. Uh, the long term outcomes really here were a question. Uh, cost savings. So they they said that they couldn't find the uh, the price of the circulatory bypass circuits for the on pump cases in the hospitals or the on off pump retractors. And uh, the authors uh, assume that if, if they found these values that the, uh, the off-pump would, would be significantly cheaper. Uh, these circuits are actually quite expensive. So that would really tilt the balance in terms of cost saving. 
uh, for the procedure itself. In terms of, uh, you know, ICU and like ward costs and all that, that was pretty much matched. Even long term at one year, the costs were matched. It's just the procedure that would would be shifted towards the off bunk uh, if they were able to get these uh, prices in. Uh, Euroscore, we mentioned that. Um, as the euro score increased, we see some sort of a trend, and a lot of people assume that higher risk patients would benefit from uh, from off pump. However, it hasn't really been uh, demonstrated uh, accurately over here. Or <clears throat> next, we have is the Ruby trial. I mean, there there are there are other good trials uh, for off pump. They had the uh, Gob Capi trial. Um, there's the mass trial. There are a bunch of, of good trials. It's just the Ruby trial is. It's important to uh, to not um, be biased when you're when you're talking about these.